Does Bluey know about the unicorn story? Do you know about that? No, no. right there. 3 2 30. The unicorn story. Yeah, tell him, Hads. Well, Mark Wood, uh, uh, we watched him playing, and he, he's sitting down at fine leg, and he's talking to someone, then he'd put his hand up like he was feeding a horse. This is a true story. And, and so I went to Trevor Bayless. When, when he's How long goes this? When, when he plays. Oh, every time he yeah. plays. And so I went to Trevor Bayless and, and said, well, what's Mark Wood do at, at fine leg? He goes, first, he's a non-drinker. He said, but he talks to a unicorn. <laughs> then during balls, he feeds it. <laughs> He's having a True lend. story. He's having a lend. Nope. Kiri's on strike, punching it down the ground. Can't beat the field. Three for 233. Has Mark Wood confirmed this? Yep. Mark Wood's confirmed it. He sits there, or stands there, sorry, and talks to someone and looks up and has a conversation and puts his hand up like he's got a feed of nuts or what. I don't know what unicorns eat. Um, and he pretends I that... don't know what <laughs> unicorns eat. I don't think many people do, Bradley. Well, Mark Wood does, and he puts his hand up and pretends to feed it. I don't know what unicorns eat. <laughs> if anyone out there can help us. <laughs> Gary into the pull shot. Fine leg mops up for a single. He moves to 19. Three for 234. I thought you'd like that, Bluey. True story. Oh, oh. Is he's out there, obviously. Mark Wood. Different cat. Huss said he is the, the heart and soul of the dressing room. Is he? Yep. He said the best man, the heart and soul, always got a smile, a positive word to say. He, he's a heart and soul operator. Oh, yep. he comes across beautifully. Yep. When I've heard him interviewed, just yep. comes across as an absolute beauty. You know, that great northern accent. Yeah. Unicorns. I might just ask, maybe slide in us. Maybe he can re redeem himself and tell us what unicorns actually eat. I don't think they eat nuts. You don't see horses eating nuts. Be a grass style hay situation. Berry dust. Smith could be tugs it around the corner for a single. He moves to 48. <laughs> Carrots. 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 I thought you said parrots. <laughs> no, Maybe. carrots. That's what Santa's. <laughs> what you feed Santa's. Oh, reindeers. For Cooper's Mildale, Triple M, Rocks Cricket, 6 for 95 England after 25 overs. They've lost 3 for 6. They were going OK, 3 for 66, Ali on 18, and Curran, the new man in, on 0. Got Brad Haddon, Greg Blewett with me. In comes Zampa. First over, back over his head. Could be a wicket down to the boundary, and it's taken down there oh, by oh, Levinson. Oh, yeah. The change of commentary has pulled a wicket, and here we go, we're away. <laughs> Seven for 95. You've been here for eight hours. <laughs> you step in, first ball gets a wicket. <laughs> Unbelievable, Brownie. <laughs> How good is this? We've had wickets falling everywhere, but your first ball in international cricket. Welcome. Well, it's an easier game than footy to call <laughs> because something happens. <laughs> and a big wicket, seven for 95 for Cooper's Mowdale, Triple M, Rocks Cricket. I saw on the roster when it got sent out last night. I saw that the, I was together with you two this morning, which is good fun. Disappeared down a bit of a YouTube rabbit hole this morning, I must admit. I saw you two put on a nice stand against uh, England at the Gabba and kind of pulled Australia out of the, the hole a little bit. But what is it with when you two come to the West and play cricket against the opposition? You blued with Matt Pryor. You just about started an all-in brawl with Suleiman Ben. That wasn't two. our fault. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We seem to just back each other up. We're, we go out there, we play some tough cricket, and uh, we're not there to talk to the opposition. Uh, we're definitely not We're not mates out in the field. So, yeah, that, that Solomon Ben incident. Yes, take us through that one to start with. Well, he's bowling spin. He's, he's left. Um, uh, he's a big guy. He should be bowling uh, fast, to be honest. But uh, Hads is at the, the striker's end. Uh, he's faced the ball, hit it into mid-wicket. I've taken off to run the single. Solomon Ben's come across. The pitch come across and grabbed onto me as I'm running, trying to get the single and not be run out. And so he's grabbing onto me and I'm trying to like escape from him. He's a big guy. He's grabbing onto me. 
And uh, I get to the other end, and Hads is, I've turned around, and Hads is pointing his bat. And <laughs> that's all I see is Hads. Oh, 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 I'm just like, I didn't know what to do. I, I sort of came down, and um, yeah, it sort of kicked off from there. It's a few words, um, as we saw in the clip just before. Uh, Solomon just sort of stun, uh, stood around and, and was going at it. And yeah, I don't know exactly what was said, but it wasn't nice. Jack, I, I was happy to let it go, to, to be honest, because... <laughs> Mitch, <laughs> Mitch was running his... Not judging lot. from the clip we watched you on. <laughs> I'll explain to you how that went from zero to 150 real quick. But <laughs> Mitch was in his right to run a straight line for the for the run. And, and Suleiman, um, in his credit, he was in his right to also to, to run for the ball. So that was an accident. And, and as I'm running past, Suleiman sort of lost it a little bit. And I could hear... I couldn't really understand him at the best of times. He used to mumble. He, he used to want to sledge us, but he didn't, he didn't really want us to hear Um which wasn't a great character trait. Um, but then he said something really weird. We're, we're about to head to the 2020 World Cup. And he said, you two won't get out alive in Barbados. I will stab you. What? And I went, beg your pardon. And that's then when it just got misty. And I don't really know what happened after that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, you stick it up for you, mate. We've always been close, John O and I. And so I've, I've just gone in and pointed the bat and I said, mate, this, this is on now. Like, you can't say things like that. And it got a bit heated and, and Chris Gale came in. And I remember I got fined 25% of my match fee. And you normally go in for a, for a hearing. And I've walked in with Steve Bernard, our, our manager. And I said, oh, can I have a look at the um, rap sheet? And oh, I think it was Crowey at the time said, oh, no, here we go. I looked at it. I signed it and I handed it straight back and I walked out. He said, Hads, what are you doing? I said, mate, that was all worth it. I'm happy to pay 25%. <laughs> Kawaja defends out in the offside. I'm, I was trying to remember the other day how many you hit off me in that over. Four fours. <laughs> <laughs> Just off the top of your head, Brian? I, I thought there was a six back over my head uh, as it was, well. It was a pull for four, and yeah. then you went, uh, you pitched up over mid off for four. <laughs> you said, okay, I'll go back short again. Cut over point. <laughs> He's made nearly 12,000 test runs, but he's plucked out the 16 off that oh. over of yours, Louis. <laughs> I love it. So, Brian, tell us more about how you used to smash Bluey around. I'm, we're interested. No, hang on. Before Brian talks, my my role with the ball, Jack, was to come on and try and break the partnership. So, not you know, go it wasn't for 16 just running over. in, line and length, boring stuff like Glenn McGraw. I was like, you know, try a few things. So, hence, you know, a couple of bounces. And, but um, That was his job. My job was... <laughs> My job was to move from 170 to 200 <laughs> in that over. <laughs> oh, that's a leave outside off stump. All tails away. Taken by De Silva, the wicket keeper. No, I remember at the end of that over, and I was just like, sorry, sorry, Tubbs, I've got nothing. I've got, I've got nothing here. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud, but in my mind, bowling to Brian on a, on a pretty good pitch, has to be said, but... On 170, mm. bowling 125 straight balls. <laughs> about the overs for West Indies? 43. Woo. Third, second. One. Give it to him. Oh. Uh, turn your bowling, gentlemen. Junior's trying to punch one over Gosford. <laughs> He's got the outside rail. Inside's no, coming. Just got beat. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Tried to punch it home from the other side of the country. Thinking, where's, where's, the, where's the focus? Post? Give me another five metres winning post. <laughs> where's the focus? I've seen him do this in big bash games when he's been watching a dog, a horse, <laughs> and a game I can of do cricket. Two things at once. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> disappointed, June. Not the noise of a man that had a win. <laughs> Now, I want to know what goes through a man's head when he's batting in a first-class game and he's coming up towards making 500. No one else ever done that. You could only ask me that. I oh, know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> Never oh. been done before or since. Well, I mean, um, it, it was a, a quiet Monday. I think there was about two men and a dog at 9 a.m. in the morning. Yes. <laughs> I, I got encouragement. It was about 1,000 people at lunch, 5,000 at tea. So uh, the CEO, the general manager of Warwickshire said, do not get out. The membership, <laughs> the membership is going through the roof at the moment. <laughs> Smith facing holder and allowing that through. So when did it come up? Just before stumps or when did you... Uh, on the 
Well, in the Caribbean, first class games, the, the captains have to agree uh, the game has nothing in it, and after yep. 10 of the 20 overs, I think here as well in test cricket. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then my non striking partner came up to me and he said, this, You know, this is the last over. I said, No, I mean, he said, Yes. In England, the umpires have the authority to pull stumps if they feel the game is dead. And that's when I realized that I've got to strike the next one for four. So at that stage, you're on 496. 97. 97. Yeah. He had an, an over to hit a boundary to make 500. <laughs> <laughs> you believe we're even having this conversation? I, I'm staggered. I'm blown away. Um, great work from your partner. Yeah, you remember was. who it was at the other end? Uh, gave you the heads up because that Piper. is great work. Keith Piper was the, the not odd batsman. Buy him a beer at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> we, had an ex we had a match at the Oval the next morning. A responsible beer. As we're discussing with the great Brian Lara, the 500 he made in the oh. county game for Warwickshire. The other thing we haven't brought up is the poor bastard who dropped him. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be raised. Didn't, oh. didn't think it was going to cost him too many. <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty regulation catch too, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, knee height. <laughs> I, I actually, the pavilion was ahead of me. I took three, four strides towards the uh, pavilion. When I looked at the, uh, the bowler, his, hands was in his, his face was in his hands on the ground. <laughs> Single down a long on for Manus Labashain. How many were you on then? 14. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> That's cost him 486. <laughs> Has there been a more punished oh, no. drop catch in the history of the game? Or no. Me or mentioned <laughs> as well. I think he came out and did the front bar, that bloke. Oh, okay. yeah, he was on Australian television. Chase and Smith into the onside. Thought about a single and then sent Manus back. At least he can see the funny side. I bet his teammates didn't. Nope. <laughs> Every break, thanks for that. <laughs> Magnificent career, Peter Siddle. Hat trick at the Gabba. I'm just going to have a look at where list. this commentary is uh, going. Let's play it. <laughs> Here we go. Crowd cheers. Here's Siddle. Oh, the ball is close. He's given it him. He's given it him. <laughs> challenge that. They almost have to challenge it. Crowd likes what it sees. Eagle Eye is up on the big screen. Now we're getting through to the umpire out in the middle. Third umpire Tony Hill from New Zealand says to Alim Dar, all is well. Peter Siddle, you have a birthday hat trick. <laughs> oh, Peter Siddle. Happy birthday, 26 today. He's also got a five wicket haul to go with it. What a day he's having. Oh, how about that? <laughs> The big oh, buffalo yeah. getting the uh, <laughs> air out of the lungs. Can we de can we delete Mark Nicholas out of what's, that? Or what? What's Nico doing? <laughs> He's sucking the oxygen out of it. Mate. You had it done I perfectly. I thought when you commentate, you're not meant to, you know, you'd be biased to your home nation. Just yeah. give me the moment, mate. <laughs> and the wicket, uh, Cam Green comes down and then clips it firmly to mid-wicket for a single. I love hearing Tubbs there and then Mark Nicholas, Nicholas jumps over him and bloody, yeah. And what, and what you don't hear was, was Warney. Yeah, Warney's egging me on big time. Well, the Just lead before, up before oh, that, wasn't oh, it? Yeah. yeah, he's saying, "Come loosen on, up those vocal yeah, cords. Loosen up the vocal cords. Come on." <laughs> we're chatting about the hat trick, and we really beat it up. But you, you know, you get those moments in commentary where you think it's not going to happen. You know, the same. Someone's got a hat trick, yeah. and it happens. It's very rare. It's the same as a player. Like I reckon yeah. I was probably on a handful over my Test career, but you just you don't worry about it. it doesn't happen. Head clipping it wide of mid on, just a single. Moves to 175, and the score four for 441. No, you, you can hear Warner even in the back of that audio. They're just laughing. Yeah. Yeah. He just he, he, he whipped me up nicely, and then it was like <laughs> when you when you hit Stuart Broad with that one on the toes, it, yeah. it just looked so good yeah. in the Gabba commentary box, and we were all up out of the chairs. That was a, that was a great moment. Here comes uh, Nisa, full ball, handsome drive from Chander Paul. Now he. <laughs> Lack of experience at Adelaide was dawdling, thinking that's going to race to the fence. It's 110 metres down there, and Labuschagne hauls it in. So the batsman only gets three. None for 35. And that there can be big moments in, in the game. You see Chandapur, beautiful off drive, invited the shot, didn't put in, but Marnus Labuschagne chased that hard, cut it down to three. Now... This is where you see the wicket. These are these little things in matches where you just make that little bit of effort, you do the work for your teammate, and all of a sudden, 
bang, you get that breakthrough. So these are the sort of things Hads would let you know about when you're facing this oh, one. Yeah. Your partner let you down, you shouldn't be on strike. Lisa's ball gets a thick outside edge of Brathwaite, but into the ground. Nice soft hands there from the Windy's captain. Always on the game and on the ball, Hads. He would not <laughs> let you miss a thing. And if your mate at the other end let you down and didn't run hard enough, and you're on strike, or well, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be on strike here, Ferg. Yeah, I, I Cozzy's let you down. Yeah. <laughs> Cosy once again has turned an easy one. <laughs> easy three to a one. <laughs> so this Brathwaite's got a very impressive necklace. I mean, with that sort of NBA caliber mm. necklace, real thick gold. Here comes Nisa now. Full ball. It's in court. Brathwaite is gone. And Chandler Paul should have run harder. Nisa gets a wicket. Brathwaite just feathers it through. Reward for the Aussies for being constantly at the batsman. One for 35. And they're the rewards that Marnus Labashay can take a bow also. Did those little things just to chase that ball down. Mike and Nice, a beautiful ball. Easy catch there, the home ground, Alex Carey. But it was all about Marnus Labashay making that little effort to get in that wicket. Well done, Australia. Oh, Brad had in the year. All genius. over it. Genius. Triple M, Rock's cricket. Mm. I thought when I played Pakistan, you never faced a straight ball against those guys. Bowling's next ball is turned on the leg side, no run. I found Brian like you know they were very skillful with the new ball. They could you know swing it normally, and then as soon as it stopped swinging, they'd go to their spinners, mm. and their spinners were always pretty good. For me, they were anyway. You would have liked their their spinners, but then and then they'd be working on the ball while the spinners were on, and then when they thought it might have been nice and juicy to give back to the. <laughs> The fast bowlers where it might just start reversing a little bit. There you go, boys. And then it was hard work again. So <laughs> I just found found it very hard against Pakistan. High school? Um, against Pakistan. Bowling's next ball. Allowed to go through. Good question. I have to get Ethan onto that. Um, that would have been your second year of test cricket. Because yeah. I came out 95, 96. Yeah, I played a couple of test matches, then got dropped, and then I played them again, I think. It was 1999 in Brisbane. Right. Made 89. Oh. oh, I got the worst. That's So on YouTube it says worst LBW oh, ever decision what, it, it, ever. Of course it's not your Dan? fault. Yes. <laughs> worst LBW Look it decision. Up. <sighs> Shouldered up. arms. McLean, uh, Mushtaq. And it just was not... Anywhere near the off stump. Bolin. Again gets this to jump up. My God, his length is perfect and his line's pretty damn good as well. That ends a maiden windy six for 56. Cooper's mild ale, Triple M, Rocks Cricket. Thank you. It was, he just bowled this leggy and it was like wide of off. I was like, oh, that was like missing the stumps by that far. What for eight? The, it was at your 89. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, from over the wicket. <laughs> and he never swung. <laughs> All right, so, geez, you're not kidding, Bluey. You're in the, you've, did you post this yourself? Worst LBW decision ever. Greg Blewett facing Mushtaq Arbat. Oh, my God. Well, Bluey, I was going to take the piss out of you, but that is the worst decision ever. Robbed again. Oh, man. my God. It's hit you outside the line of off stump and spinning away. Stop. Stark's first ball is defended into the ground by De Silva, who's on eight, chases on three. Brian's having a bit of a look. What? Okay. Thoughts? All right. What? Very bad. <laughs> <laughs> Very bad. <laughs> I just hope it was in, um, a West Indian Empire. <laughs> I think it was. I oh, think it was. No. Um, Buckner. Ba uh, Barker. 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 Steve Barker. Uh, 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 I can't remember his first name. Lloyd Barker. Lloyd Barker. Oh. He was the short. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I'm pretty sure it was him. Mushtak even looks guilty. Oh. Yeah, he's even tilted the head there. And Wasms just pat him on the head. Just don't say anything. <laughs> Holding <laughs> Hold to breath. Wait. Oh, did he get a tickle on that? I reckon he did. Never looked like it today. Bolin with his first cherry. One for 15. Oh, it's a bit of a mental torture there for the skipper. Scotty Bolin, first ball, does what he does best, bags it on a length. Little bit of nibble off the wicket. 
catching the outside edge, and Carey takes a simple catch. Scotty Bond into the attack. Immediate effect for the Australia. Skipper Brathway gone for three, 115. Cooper's Mild Ale, Triple M Rocks Cricket. Shamar Brooks out in the middle to face the music. Boland a wicket with his first delivery in this second innings. He's in again. Brooks defending to point, no run. Yeah, good start, Scotty Boland. Yeah, I'm surprised he actually didn't take the new ball, but they gave it to Michael Nisa, who looks looks like he's got a fraction of an injury. Michael Nisa, but he didn't find the out, the swing which they were looking for, Michael Nisa. So good move from the skipper to get Scotty Boland on and just have a look at the tiniest of tickle from the skipper through to the keeper. And, well, his technique to that, he squared up, he was front on. Yeah. And all you can do in that space is nick it, which is what he did. Boland again. Brooks hit the pads and looks good to me and the finger goes up two in three balls for Scotty Boland and they're not even sending it upstairs Brooks is on his way oh I tell you what this brings back some great memories of the MCG this is what this does Jimmy can he do it again Scotty Boland beautiful bowling Brooks has had enough pitched on a length Jack hey. back, hits him right in front no point having a look at that one. Big decision gone. That is smashing middle halfway up. Two for 15. Two for 15, the West Indies. Two and three balls for Boland Heath. Scott Boland, his average ballooned out to 11.17 in test cricket. After these two wickets, 10.05 might sneak under 10 yet again here. Play more and pay less at Anaconda. Jermaine Blackwood's out there. Yeah, and he knows he needs to show a little bit more than what he did in the first innings as well. So this is a big moment. Scotty Boland on fire. Charging in from the river end. Defending Blackwood. The crowd getting behind this fine Victorian. Just line and length bowling. Scotty Boland's got an opportunity under lights. What's interesting about the, the pink ball test matches is that whoever wins the toss does seem to generally dictate how the game goes. We just have a look at the replay of Shamra Brooks, and I'll tell you what, technically he didn't play that well at all. It was a good ball from Boland, was pitched up, just seemed back a fraction, but it was a tentative sort of... He didn't yeah. look like he was actually had any intention of playing the ball. And his front pad blown off. Boland in, and well done Cam Green to knock it down. Nearly got past him for runs for Blackwood. Listen to the crowd, Adelaide Oval. Yep. Yeah, they're definitely up and about in the stadium. Not sure about the village. How's Lise going out there, Jimmy? Well, I think she'll be enjoying Probably herself. Six I, pims deep. Well, well, I haven't heard anything, so that, I would assume that means she's enjoying herself. <laughs> Come on, Scotty. Make it a three-wicket over this one. Adelaide Oval crowd getting behind. Scotty Boland, here we are. River end. Boy, edge. Jimmy, it happened three in the over. Scotty Boland, we have seen this show before. It was a great catch by Cam Green. And you know what? The ball before Jimmy, the one percenters from the Australians. He could have easily just let it go for a single, let Blackwood get off strike. Hits him on strike on a duck. Boland delivers the beauty. Hey. Cam Green takes a specky. Aussie's on fire. What about those mitts on Cam Green? Yeah, bad pad for Pat Cummins, but not for Stark. He runs now into Van der Dusen. Oh, he knocked him over! He smashed it into the stumps! And that's 300 for Mitchell Stark! He's now a legend! The Australian fast bowler has picked up his 300th wicket, Junior. Oh, good call, Gussie. Good call. 300. He joins an elite club, Mitchell Stark. And what a delivery to bring it up. It swung late, went between bat and pad. Rudy van der Dusen <laughs> was uh, searching for the ball. He was caught on the crease, and gee, I reckon this is going to be over pretty quickly. I know there are only two out, but the danger signs are there for South Africa. Yeah, South Africa still trailing by 63. They're two for three for Cooper's Mild Ale, Triple M, Rocks Cricket. We've just seen some history being made. Mitchell Stark joins the 300 club with an absolute beauty. Junior War, how good was that? It was a very, very good delivery. Uh, nip back, swung back, whichever way you want to call it. 
that's it. You could drive a lorry through the gap between the bat and pad. Yeah. And Rudy Fana Dusen. Mm. That was that was poor technique against a very good ball. The Vermin out is facing Stark coming in from the Vulture Street end. He's at the umpire now, and he's defending. He wants one, but he won't get it. That's the end of the third over. Brad Haddon, Mitchell Stark, 300 wickets. Yeah, congratulations, Mitchell Stark. You know what? It doesn't matter now that Travis Head dropped that catch at bat pad in the first innings because that's how you want to get your 300th, Gussie. A full ball swinging in. That's vintage Mitchell Stark. Now he goes down to fine leg. He's going to enjoy the crowd down there. Acknowledge such a big a moment for him, but well done, Mitchell Stark. You're absolutely right, Hads. They're on their feet, aren't they, Junior? Look yeah, at them. Yeah, they are. And if you had to write a script as how he was going to get the 300 with it, it would be an in-swinging fast ball to a right-hander knocking the poles out. Yes. That's his trademark delivery. And he's soaking up that atmosphere with a few mid-strength Cooper's Mild Isles on is he, board. Is with he having punch. one, is he? No, but the, the, grip, the grip behind <laughs> him could, are. He could have, I reckon. It wouldn't matter. He, w he will in about an hour if he keeps bowling like that. <laughs> Just about bet you get a run out. Then there's another wicket always seems to fall after it. Leads to bad things. Stark in the air. Oh! Oh! Love Machine! The Superman dive! Oh. Two mitts to the pill and pounced oh. it magnificently. Oh, Labuschagne's got two wickets for Australia. That's what he's got. The run out of the Captain Elgar in the first session. Now this catch, he's feeling extra cover. It's well hit by Zondo, oh, but it's so a long shame. way. To Labuschagne's left, he takes one step and then leaps, oh. gets two hands to it, and takes it about a foot off the ground. Super catch, super fielding. That is superb. Five for 67, Cooper's Mild Ale, Triple M Rocks Cricket. But I don't mind the look of Tiernus De Brain. He looks good. He waits here and he pulls straight in the air. He's gone, you know. Easy catch. Oh, Take oh, it by the keeper. Commentator's curse. <laughs> you might like the look of him. You can look at him walk <laughs> off parkour. <laughs> because that was an awful oh. shot. It was a premeditated pull shot. It looked like he was sort of on the front foot, but not really. And he just spooned it up. What a pathetic way to give away the <laughs> wicket. After he did look great. Two for 56. Yeah, they'll be disappointed with that wicket, the South Africans. Cameron Green, he, he gets extra bounce. He hits the pitch hard. Not the easiest guy to pull, and it's a nothing shot. Really should have been playing with a straight bat. Two balls to go on this over for JB, Lord Ian Botham and Fergie. That's probably the best lineup we've got. Edged, taken. Verena departs. Green gets the wicket. Smith with the catch. And the big partnership finally falls. It gave the South Africans 112, but it's been broken by the triple million dollar man, <laughs> Cam Green. Yeah, and really well bowled, Cam Green. Couple of tight overs. We don't say that often about Cameron Green. Bowled a really good couple of tight overs and eventually got a ball about just outside of stump. Just went away enough to find the edge of Verena's bat. Really well bowled. Two for 20 now for Green. Funky cold, Verena departs <laughs> for a well made 52. It would do Cam Green the world of good to, you know, to have a good spell mm. and to pick up maybe another wicket or two because has it sort of been used in little bits and pieces up to now? I think he's better than that. Also bowling a good clip at the moment. Mm. Operating around 140. That's what we like to see from him. What about this meandering over rate, by the way? Oh. 24 still to go. Green in. Nick! Gone! Brilliant from Cam Green. Gets his third. And Janssen's wonderful innings comes to an end. Well, it was there. He threw it up there. He said, come and get it. He went and he got it, but only a faint one. And he's gone straight away around the wicket. Takes it, makes LBW hard. How did you used to feel about that? You would have stuck to over the wicket to start with, B, definitely. surely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I always find it hard to understand. I don't get it. Um, especially if you, you know, he's on good pace, ball going across. And if you can get one to come back, then, you know, every object. Green. Got him! Chopped it on! That's why he bowls down the wicket to <laughs> Four wickets now for Cam Green. Rebuttal on his way. Eight for 186. 
<laughs> as drinks come on the ground for <laughs> Cooper's Mild Ale. Triple M rocks cricket. Ngidi. Facing green. Members end, MCG. Five wicket haul on the line. Knocks him over! Five for Fakan Green! Five for 27. Superb from the big young West Australian. That's what I like to see. Don't rely on anyone else, I'll just knock those stumps over. Yes. Perfect. What a great effort, though. Broke the partnership. That's, uh, once that was broken, it was only a matter of time. That is good. That is good from this unbelievably talented young man. What's quite interesting is four batsmen are running, <laughs> four people are running off to get the pads oh, on. That's it. Is that a good sign? I don't know. <laughs> there he is, holding the kookaburra aloft. Well done, Greeny. You champ. I'm confused. A lot of just sits are There's, there's a, a paper bag on the ground blowing south. And the, and the flags on top of the grandstand are playing, blowing north. A little bit confused. What's going on? Isn't that like a cauldron effect? Um, Does the wind come swirling in? Yeah, but that would be then it goes around in circles, not just straight across the ground. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I'm right. not sure anyone knew what you were doing there, Merv, to be <laughs> well, honest. Well, the flags, have a look at the flags on top of the grandstand. The wind's coming from the south, and that piece of paper is blowing to the, to the south. I'm just confused. It looked like you were talking about field changes nah, and you're talking about a brown paper bag blowing across the ground, Merv. And back to the cricket. This is down the leg side, and there is no run. Mate, I talk about the important stuff. Like, anyone can talk about the cricket, but you just the little things that you pick up when you actually watch the game, Ferg. Adding atmosphere to the occasion, is, is that right? Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm pleased to say that the brown paper bag is about three quarters of the way across the uh, outfield at the moment, making good progress, steady wind against it. What do you think the pushing, brown paper... Pushing up against the wind. What's the brown paper bag's aim here, Merv? What's it trying to do out there? What do you reckon his name is? And Gidi, full and defended by... There you go. Cameron Green. Here's a question for you. What do you reckon that brown paper bag's name is? We, we, we run a list in the poll. Is that what we're aiming for? No, we shouldn't. <laughs> I, I reckon. I think the sooner we change topic, the better. I reckon it'd be Russell. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's comedy gold. <laughs> that is gold. Is Where he? are we at? Is he? That's gold. What is going even, on in here? Even if you say Who invited so, this bloke? <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good we're going to an ad break. Here he comes. Final ball. Oh. Office over and defended <laughs> by Green. And I think we're we've going to have to throw it. to an ad break. <laughs> Seven for 518 for Cooper's Mild Ale. Triple M. Rocks uh, cricket. Help. Warner on 196 facing Ngidi. Oh. oh, and it rears. It runs down the third man fence. 200 for David Warner. He's on his knees. He's pumping his arms. A 100th test. Somehow he leaps into the air. <laughs> he cramps as he does it. This is huge ticker from D. Warner. He's got the full body cramp in his celebration. He's made it 200 for the ages. And he's nearly snapped in half. Bruce Reed style. <laughs> He's gone in the car now with a two-over <laughs> jump as caught. He... Well played, David Warner. That's his third test double century. Oh. But he's gone in the left car. <laughs> I'll tell you what, as funny as that, that's a great call. It's a brilliant call, Harry. Just the way you call that, it. described it. Now he's just standing still, keeping his legs stiff and just waving the bat around the ground. Oh. That's just gold from you, Howie. Didn't expect to weave the 12th man into the 200, but what an innings it is. He, he literally tried to jump in the air, the little man, and the calf just tightened up, <laughs> wrapping the Nadal full body cramp style. It's been a great partnership, this one. Have a look at this. They're back up at Kiss Camp. She's got up and walked away. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, the poor chap. She sacked him off. She what? <laughs> she what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> you know what I said. Not for the first time, we return to the cricket. Thank goodness. Merv Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I definitely didn't say what you're alluding to. <laughs> Come on, bowl the ball. <laughs> oh. oh, someone say KFC. <laughs> 
and Gidi. Here he comes, running towards us. <laughs> and Green, happy to defend. Well, that's, that's a very strong defensive shot, isn't it, Izzy? Absolutely. Front foot forward, elbow, front elbow, nice and high. Pristine stuff out Technically there. Technically correct. Very nicely played, Merv. Talking about uh, Michael Bevan blowing up, so that was with the key. <laughs> but, the, yeah. but in general, like we played with a lot of cricketers. Well, players that used to blow up when they got out. Well, I think it'd be fair to say that most players um, at some stage would blow up. You'd have, you'd have one where you'd, you'd feel you got a little bit robbed or you'd played a terrible shot. But Bevo, no, he was certainly in the league of his own. And sitting here watching the MCG, I remember playing a Shield game here where Warney got him in both innings for, for both two low scores. And you could see Bevo wasn't walking off. He was almost running off because he was about to explode when Warney got him in the second innings. Dark, good short one, went through by Zondo. And as soon as he got off the ground, Bevo, you just cleared the change rooms because you didn't want to be in there because there was bits and pieces flying everywhere. <laughs> Apparently one, I don't know whether it was a Shield game or a Test match, he was, so the, the old change rooms at the MCG were, were below the viewing area and everyone, it, someone was hearing this sort of <laughs> crashing sort of noise and then it'd go silent for a while and then <laughs> didn't know what it was and someone got sent down to see what was happening. And Bevo was shoulder charging the lockers no. from one side of the room. That was the game. Was yeah. that the same? That, that was the game. <laughs> that was the game where Warney got him. That was the one. There might have been a, uh, an invoice sent from Victorian Cricket Association to Cricket New South Wales. Poland. Hits him on the pad. He'll send it upstairs for Rayner, but it's out on the field. That is smashing in the middle and off, boys. Maybe middle. For Beautifully bowled by Scott Bowler. Let's have a listen. I've checked the front foot. It's a delivery. We go to front time when available. There's no bat. So we're only ball tracking here. Yeah, Hit in line. Pitching outside off. Impact in Hitting line. Hitting. Off your trot. Rayner's got to go. Have some Spit of that. wicket's fallen. You've been good, but you can bugger off. Oh, you've given him a serve. Five, so you have it to him. He's been You're very out. good, Jeez. but he can head his way off. Harsh. And he can hurry up about it too. Cooper's <laughs> Mile Vale, Triple M Rocks Cricket. <laughs> An expectant balcony, Australian balcony, watching on from the Sydney Pavilion. They do say it's it's more nerves watching from the sidelines than it is playing in the middle. And I mean, Sirin, you probably have more experience of that. Is that, is that true? You reckon you'd rather be out there in the middle? Oh, I don't know. Depends what I was doing the night before. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly the question that Steve Smith has asked himself. <laughs> at, the back of, at the back of the uh, dressing room, the physio's bench. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nokia into Smith, and this is Paul. Square at the wicket. Into the crowd, on the bounce. Yep, they're going to get a boundary for it. Indeed he is. Smith takes his helmet off. Back to the crowd. Regulation century. From the Sydney sider, Steve Smith, which is three figures. He hugs Usman Khawaja at the other end. They formed a solid, solid partnership. South Africa unable to break it at all today. Calm as you like. A regular occurrence here at the SCG. Steve Smith ton. 103 from 190 deliveries. He's never looked like getting out. And from what I understand, the rate at which uh, Steve Smith is scoring century surpasses them all. As this one is full and driven back straight into the hands of Maharaj. And I think that Maharaj has his first wicket in this Australian tour. And yes, it is. Smith is out for 104. He's driven it straight back at the bowler. All he had to do was hang on. And he did, he clung on to it this time. Maharaj has his wicket, his figures one for 95. Smith departs for 104. And Australia, three wickets down for three, five, six. Well, you can hardly believe it. You can hardly believe it, and Steve Smith certainly can't. Half volley, straight back to him. He couldn't drop it if he, if he tried. And Steve Smith, after one standing ovation, He'll get a second standing ovation as he walks off the SCG. Caught and bowled Maharaj for 104. Kishaf Maharaj with his first wicket of this series. He gets that of Steve Smith in triple figures. 104, he's out for three for three, five, six. For Cooper's mild out triple M rocks cricket. Oh. Oh. Dead. 
So the last time Australia had a better record, the last time we won more consecutive tosses in a row, sorry to say it started in 1998 oh, in right. October in Peshawar by one M.A. Taylor. We won 12 in a row. 12 Tub tosses. Tub well, we are dealing with one of the great tosses. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not surprising anybody. <laughs> then I started this great yeah, exactly. tossing, right? That's it. <laughs> no one surprised listening to Triple M. <laughs> That the greatest ever was you. Can we go back to Peshawar? No. <laughs> uh, nice little rendition of the Richie song in the drinks break. Let's have a listen to it. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that Channel 9 music brings <laughs> memories back for a lot of people. Gus and Izzy are over there with the Richies. Come in, team. Yeah, no, we're over here. We just were right here for that rendition. And how good is it just to be amongst everyone here? It's beautiful out in the sunshine, and the Richies are having a ball. Although, chaps, I'm not sure that we're going to call them the Richies or the Gus Warlands, because I tell you, our man out here had a bit of a standing ovation when we came down. <laughs> Am I allowed to scull a beer as, as well on here? I'm not too sure, but I did that because I just felt the pressure to do it. But uh, just an awesome amount of people out here loving it. And hearing that song was just taking me back to my childhood. It's when cricket, to me, when I fell in love with the game. So, yeah, we're going to be a part of these guys at 222, <coughs> which is not too far away pretty much straight away now, is what about for you just to see these legends of, uh, of, of Richie Benno, of course? Some people wanted to play on the SCG scoring hundreds. Other people wanted to commentate a la Richie Benno and be one of the Benno's. And I feel like I'm living that childhood dream right here. These, these are my people. Gussie, how, how does it work with the, with your ticket? And Someone told me you get your wig and your microphone, but you've got to get your own jacket. Is that the way you understand it? Yeah, that's exactly right, mate. So you get your wig and your, and your blow-up microphone, and then you get your seat, and then you've got to do your best to come up with, obviously, your, your beige or your whatever colour you want to come up with. But they're legends, mate. They're having a great time. Thank God the weather's turned and we can have a full day because these guys are having an absolute crack, and they deserve it, you know. This is exactly what cricket's all about, these type of supporters. They love it. Hey, hey, Gussie, can you ask one of them, or maybe the leaders of the Richies, do they do they have, like, a fine system? Oh. If someone's got the wrong coloured beige or, mm. or they don't have a jacket, is, is there, like, a fine for, for in, inappropriate dress? Well, I've got the skipper right here with me. Uh, Tubby Taylor asked, is there a fining system if people don't come up with the right beige or the right, uh, the right outfit, the right gear? Absolutely. It's a, it's a huge honour to represent Richie and, and honour Richie Benno. So we have really strict dress standards. You've got to have the cream, the bone, the white, the oh, off-white, yeah, the ivory, the beige. <laughs> there you go, Tubbs. I hope that answers your question, brother. On you, Gus. <laughs> we'll do our best. Well done to Gus and Izzy. Two for three, three, four. Izzy and Gus are out in the crowd. Izzy, come in, come in. <laughs> well, it's just me at the moment because uh, Gus Warden seems to be... We've lost him. And I think we found another Richie in the crowd as well. Is it the Richies or the Gusses out here? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> got a few words from... I'm not quite sure how lubricated everybody is out here. I mean, Gus has already had to, to deck two, but I think the gentlemen out here probably probably on a fair few more. As long as they're Cooper's Mile Isles, they'll be fine out there, is he? Absol absolutely Cooper's Mile Isles only out here, from what I can understand. All right, we hope you get home safely. If not... Uh, and they love Triple M. What of course they, they do. Never, never give the mic to animals or children, and possibly those who've had a few Cooper's Isles. Good on you, Iz. <laughs> Gus Warland, Greg Blewett and Merv Hughes taking you through our last over for a comms change. Janssen from the Ramwick end into Smith. Full ball, driven. Can't beat Smith off and it stays two for 293. So it's two for 293. Merv, can you focus on the cricket? I don't know what is happening behind you. Throwing, you're like a kid at school. Yeah, or otherwise. Throwing or otherwise, rubbish around. Just leave. Yeah. <laughs> focus. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's gone. Oh, he's hey, gone. It worked. It worked. Yes. <laughs> it's gone. Oh, oh no. Come back, Bad news fella. Is coming oh, back. We love you, mate. We love you. Janssen in again to Smith. Just one off the outside edge, but he can't beat 
gully as he gets squared up by a good one from Janssen. Two for 293. Just doing what I'm told, Gus. OK. <laughs> I got asked back, so I'm back. Bold, bold by Janssen there. Very good ball, copying the outside edge. <laughs> Been a good spell since lunch from Janssen. Mm. Hazelwood around the wicket. Short one. Took a bit of the glove. Again. How many times <laughs> does Elgar want to get out the same way? <laughs> He's gone. One for 22. <laughs> He should have walked on the catch to, to Smith. Just what he should have done. What the hell? <laughs> Great short ball, though, from Hazelwood. It's a ripper right over his right shoulder. He, he thought about hooking it, but it was on a bit quick for him. In the end, he tried to evade it, takes the gloves, and Carey takes Ooh. off and takes a good catch. They've got the skipper. Hazelwood's got him. Well, there was a little bit of uh, uh, commotion, for want of a better word, in the, the media today, so, suggesting that your captain should allow you to bat on. When did you find out that he was going to declare? Um, I, I, the plan was always to bat in the morning. Uh, the rain was the only thing that was going to halt it. Uh, and it rained at the worst times. Every time we thought we were going to get on, it just a little bit of rain would come through. And then they took the covers off and there's a few muddy patches and it just kept getting less likely and less likely. I knew, obviously, Paddy wanted to bowl at some stage. And then um, before he even came up to me and talked to me, I could sort of read the signs. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly just said, I went up to him like, Paddy, mate, just whatever you need to do to win this test match just do it because uh, i love playing for australia and it, you know if i'm not playing this game to win this game then it'd be wrong for me to ask you to go out there for two or three overs so just do whatever you feel i want to know right. i want to know is his bedside manner so is he sort of ripping the band-aid off or is he apologizing before telling you the bad i mean how does how... no 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 I, I got him first i don't want to <laughs> i don't want him to come to me so i'm like mate you just make the decision take the motion out of it you just do what you want to do so um, i made the initiative to make sure i got him first